What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from the quarantine zone again. And this time we are here with Titan Fox of the Almighty Hammer King. Thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having us. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, anytime, anytime. So you have your self-titled album coming out uh, tomorrow, or it's technically out mm -hmm. today, depending on how long it takes to upload this on YouTube. But uh, I was curious to how the making of this album was. How did this album sort of come to be? Were you, were you like taking a new approach to this, or was it sort of like uh, continuing in a similar uh, vein, such as Kingdom of the Hammer or King is Rising, etc.? Well, basically... Um... The, the answer is always quite boring because we're kind of musicians who really play a lot from the heart, which means whatever happens to us happens. And um, we're always looking for straightforward songs, very easy to get into. And I think we were lucky this time because um, I think out of the 10 songs that we have on the album, practically you could play six or seven in the live set setting. So we were looking for powerful songs. And I think we made the album a little bit little bit more powerful than the others the production is, is more intense this time and um basically we have decided to focus on the the character of the hammer king lyrically that's why the album is self-titled in that case and has the uh, the hammer king on the, on the front cover for the first time ever mm -hmm. i've always wondered what like what the significance of the hammer king was in a way is this like maybe a metaphor of who you personally are or like a character that you're portraying or is it almost just kind of like a story that just you, you all wrote together and that is just part of the music itself basically both aspects are true um i mean everything that we do happens within the story or the legend of the hammer king without the inside of the kingdom of the hammer king but the interesting thing is lately when we did the video for awaken the thunder we bumped into some people who came around the video location and they asked the same question, who is the Hammer King? And I said, in a way, the Hammer King is not only this fearful ruler that you have got inside of the, the legend, the story context, but it's also, it could be, it could be yourself. If, you, if you're into, into God and Jesus Christ, it could be pretty well be God or Jesus Christ. If you're a Satanist, it could be Satan. Uh, so it, it really can be a placeholder for, for anything powerful in your life, actually. So it's almost fair to say that the Hammer King can serve as both a protagonist and an antagonist at the same time, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. As any good, as any good ruler, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, has there ever been a time where maybe like personal experiences or personal aspects of your life influenced the story of this album in a way, or has Hammer King always been a way of just escaping who you and your bandmates personally are? I must say it is in, in a way it is pretty much like an escape i mean good music or if you're into movies the same thing it's, it's always a sort of an escape there uh, as a sort of an inner asylum but also of course a source of power that's what i see in in, in our music and in, in this in the in the story of the hammer king as well the legend says that we live with the hammer king in, inside of his kingdom and of course he's the ruler we have to obey but on the other hand we're absolutely safe we're um taking advantage of his wealth and his fortune and of the pro pro protection as well so in a way i think it's, it's it's a certain kind of a an escape but also a source of power well being that you know this album or really just all the hammer king albums tell stories it's fair to say that you need to start off the album with awaken the thunder and end uh with the uh, king of kings it's in a way right it's not like or uh, the outro for holy it's not like uh you could listen to this album on shuffle and really get a full feel of the story of what the hammer yeah. king is fully into right <clears throat> i think that's absolutely true somebody asks is, is, if this is, is whether this is a concept album or not it's definitely not a concept album it's more like a collection of songs that all focus on the hammer king but i strongly believe that uh, the the track order is absolutely significant for for the experience because it's, it's like any concert you could have the same 20 songs in the concert but if you shuffle the order the concert might be quite crappy actually and uh, that's that's very important we we uh, tried many many configurations awaken the thunder as the first song and probably hammerschlag as the second and it just didn't work and i think in the order that we got the tracks every track depends on the track before and has an impact on the, on the following track that's why i really think that you should play it start to finish do you think that when you're playing this in a live setting and you like take uh 
tracks from different albums that that maybe uh, changes the context of the story in a way or you're maybe you're expressing a different story live than what you would do on one specific album um i must say that <coughs> building up a set list for a concert is, is a very natural thing for me especially i've always done this in any band that i am and um, even when i played with ross the boss from new york i basically did the set lists and i think they were quite 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 good actually so um, I think whenever you add new songs to the show, there is a certain sort of a structure that you probably keep from the previous tour and then just take some songs out, put some other songs in. For the first time now with the new album, Hammer King, we will change the opening track. We always started with Kingdom of the Hammer King every show and we will not do this. We will start with Awaken the Thunder now. So I think now for the first time, we will have a very different dynamic in the, in the live shows because Awaken the Thunder is a much more massive track compared to the Epic Kingdom. So, um, but I think it's it's the same as building a good album. It's, you really try to have a very good movement of songs when you do a show for 15 or 18 or 20 songs. Absolutely. And do you, obviously, you know, when it comes to writing an album that has a story or a character involved, um, you you know it obviously determines the lyrics, but why do you obviously this also determines the music itself in your case, right? Do you feel that maybe if Hammer King's music was instrumental, it almost convey the same narrative? I don't know. I really don't know. I'm I've been a, a guitarist for almost I don't know 25, 30 years or so, and um, I've never been interested in, in instrumental music at all. I mean, sometimes you can get one or two good instrumentals, and they really can cheer up a concert or an album. But basically, many of my guitar playing friends, they always come, come on, you must see Steve Vai, you must see Joe Satriani or whoever. And I always say, I'm totally sorry, but I'm absolutely not interested in, in, in uh, instrumental music. It's not that I don't like it or I don't cherish their abilities. It's just something I'm so hooked on sing-alongs, on choruses. I'm pretty much a very, very vocal focused musician. And therefore I think one of the biggest points, aspects of Hammer King is that you have the the easy to sing along melodies, and of course the very obvious lyrics in a way that everybody can really join in. So I think you would understand the music without vocals, but I think it's just not the same. It's very much focused on the vocals actually. Yeah, of course. But can your music also still be open to interpretation or is the goal to maybe engage the listener into the story of the Hammer King as much as the music itself? I'm absolutely open to interpretation, of course. And could maybe somebody else's interpretation maybe change uh, your perspective on the music as well? I don't know. I don't think so. I'm, I think I'm just too too much connected with the, with the music that it would change my perspective, actually. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about maybe um, uh, expressing the Hammer King in other mediums outside of music as well, like through yeah. comics or short films or uh, visual art of some sort? Absolutely, absolutely. The the good thing is the, the brother of our bass player, Gladius, is actually one of the leading people in, in the gaming business in Germany and Europe. He's one of the um, guys who runs the, the, the gigantic Gamescom, which usually takes place every summer, but this time, of course, in 2020 and 2021, it's cancelled. But usually they do this, and he's one of the, uh, the co-managers -manager, of this whole business. So there are plans to have the Hammer King appear in some form in the gaming business as well and we would absolutely be open for comics as well we, we love comics of course yeah i could really see uh hammer king almost being like a franchise of some sort maybe like you gotta make for for your merch booth when you go on tour you gotta make a ha hammer king action figure yeah hey it's, it's, it's really it's planned it's already they have started building one we just decided on the colors i think last thursday or so one week ago so there will be a figure and it, it really looks killer it's one of the guys from our bass players uh, businesses and it's, it's fantastic uh, he produces them with a machine but he paints each and every one by hand so they all look slightly different and it's, it's really wonderful work I, I can't wait to have one myself oh man that's gonna be awesome that's gonna be awesome yeah, I, I totally agree yeah I totally you, agree you gotta play a show at comic-con when that comes back that would be a great yeah one. yeah absolutely that, that would be fantastic and I mean, on the other hand, the, the comic uh, business or the, 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 the gaming business, there are so many people into that. You can reach so many people when you're in that businesses as well. So that would be wonderful because as a musician, 
you want to reach people. It's many musicians say, I only do this for myself, but it's, I think it's bullshit. You do the music for yourself, but you want to reach as many people as possible. And video games are ultimately like have been the, I mean, how many people discovered their favorite bands through Guitar Hero? I mean, I discovered. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, video game soundtracks are just so awesome and have been yeah. gateways. And if you think of Metallica's, was it Death Magnetic, I think, the sound on the on the Guitar Hero version was in, it was su superior to the to the proper CD. So you, you even had the better album on the game. That was fantastic in a way. And you were playing along with it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, that's fantastic. Do you almost feel like a listener, like let's say they're just discovering you on this self-titled album now. Do you think that uh, mm -hmm. in order to get the full story of this Hammer King, they should go back and listen to your previous albums? So you almost look at your albums like a Lord of the Rings in order to get the... Uh, the plot of one album you need to listen to the mm. album before it and so on well i mean uh, it, it would be really <laughs> quite a big thing to compare it to lord of the rings but basically um i mean i expect many people to discover us now with this album this is the first time that we work with napalm records and the fact that i'm talking to you now it never happened before so there is a lot of connection behind napalm records of course and uh, the, the distribution is universal there is a lot of uh, connections to people possible and connections with people are always very helpful when you're playing music yeah. so i think many people will discover us now with this album and i mean we decided on naming it hammer king because of the lyrical content but also because of the fact that this could be the first time people are listening to us actually so um this should be the perfect moment to start with hammer king but of course me as a musician but also as a fan I'm, I'm, of course i'm a kind of a fan of some of our songs as well i i really believe that you need to to get the other albums as well because on each and every album of ours there are songs that we do in every show and that really work fantastic in the live situation so i think you, you need to get them all of course yeah and napalm records is a great i mean i, I would think for especially with your style and your genre yeah, they're perfect. they're, they're perfect. a great label they're very supportive they've been very supportive over this yeah. outlet as well so huge shout out to everybody oh, idle hands fun. fantastic oh yeah oh yeah they're great they changed their name um they changed their name yeah to uh, onto others oh my god i did not know i didn't know yeah they're really good they're really good um I, they're, they're fantastic yeah they're a really fantastic band yeah yeah but uh, Napalm has always been like I feel like for your style. Like I, I was able to tell that you were signed to Napalm before I it even said that. Uh, like <laughs> it, it, because I was like, yeah, this band is definitely on Napalm. I could just tell by their style. Yeah, yeah ab absolutely, ab absolutely. I mean, we were very, very, very happy with our previous label, we were with Pustel Sur, but they basically do more music like Idle Hands and, and underground bands and so on. So that was not really the, the kind of audience that we would like to reach. And ever since we started Hammer King, we said one day we should be with Napalm because I totally think, as you think, that would be the perfect match. Yeah, and then it really happened, and I'm, I'm so happy. It's, it's so they give us so much work, and it's fantastic to have work when you're in a band. Absolutely. Yeah, and like we need like a full like Hammer King with Unleash the Archers, Glory Hammer, uh, L Storm, yeah. like uh, all yeah, yeah. their whole power metal roster. Absolutely. Um, and I always said it would be an interesting thing to have a, a Hammers and Kings tour with Hammerfall, War Kings, and Hammer King. It would be fantastic as well. <laughs> be a I would twist. so, so like to tour right by tomorrow. I mean, we, we never know when this will start again, but we, well, we're totally waiting for it. It'll be worth the wait. Um, and you mentioned yeah. also uh, earlier in the interview, you're like a big fan of like, you know, sing-along choruses and this powerful instrumentation, yeah. which is you know, essential in what is classified as power metal. But I was just recently interviewing uh, Van Canto as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and they're labeled as a power metal band. Now, I've seen so many bands that are labeled power metal because they either have symphonic elements in their sound or, you know, they have these sing-along choruses. Even a lot of bands that have, like, similar concepts as yours are labeled mm -hmm. as power metal. To you, what it makes power metal power metal? Because I think all heavy metal, whether it's Iron Maiden or Kill Switch Engage mm -hmm. or Morbid Angel or mm -hmm. Mayhem, it all has power behind it. So to you, what makes power yeah, metal power metal? <laughs> I must honestly say, I really never understood what power metal really is. I mean, I was raised on, on heavy metal. My first bands were, of course, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, and The Mighty Halloween, for example. So that was one of my very first ones. And when Halloween started, 
everybody said Halloween is heavy metal. Nowadays, you say Halloween is power metal. I mean, they have not changed that drastically. So basically, it's it's a label for music, and I'm fine with it. Power metal, of course, we've got power in our music. But if you if you ask me what style do you play, then I always say we play heavy metal. That's that's what I believe in. And so yeah. It's funny you mentioned that. I just interviewed uh, Halloween uh, two weeks ago, and uh, they they uh, and they yeah, and they agree with the same thing. And like, it's funny too because even Black Sabbath, you know, the first real heavy metal band, people are now labeling them as doom metal. I'm like, they weren't thinking about that back in the day. So no, no, no not at all. I mean, back in the day, you would probably say that was rock music anyway. Yeah. So that's. I mean, it's 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 helpful in a way. I mean, if you ask me. There is heavy metal, there is thrash metal, and there is death metal. And if I really want, I could probably say it's there is also black metal. But the rest is it's all the same in a way. I mean it's it's okay, whatever it is. Yeah, I would throw metalcore in that genre too. Just uh because uh, Yeah. But I mean no, the, definitely that's that's a different genre, yeah, that's right. Yeah, but it's just it's such a rabbit hole. It, it's like you go on Wikipedia and look up some obscure genre and there's only like two bands in the whole genre. Oh, very good. Yeah. So I, I will go to Wikipedia right thereafter and label us Royal Metal, the only band. <laughs> yeah. No or Hammer Core. That should be if, if you guys Hammer Core, fantastic. Yeah. That'll be the name of your album if you ever sell out. That's your that's your name, Hammer Core. I will put it down right away. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, before we go, uh, I want to thank you so much for your time today and for such a great conversation. Uh, is there just anything else? Thanks a lot. The pleasure was all mine. <laughs> is there just anything else that you would like to promote with uh, Hammer King uh, for the release of the self-titled album? Can you tour the States when the world opens back up, please? Well, we would go, honestly, we will go any place that, 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 will, that will be possible. I mean, of course, when the stages are alive again, there will be all the touring from 2020 and practically all the touring from 2021 at the same time. So it's going to be a very crowded place, actually. Um, I really hope that we find a place to play and that we will find a tour to, to be on. Uh, we would like to play as many support shows as possible and really introduce our music to as many new people as possible. So that would be fantastic. Um, I mean, the album will be out by tomorrow or by today, whenever you broadcast this. and. Um, we strongly believe in the album. We've really invested a lot of energy and, and work and money and everything that goes with it into that album because we think that this is the best thing that we've ever made. And I know that every musician says this, but in that case, I, I have to say it myself. And uh, we want to be on the road as soon as possible and really get in, in touch with people and, and connect with people all over the world. We would like to play the States. We would like to play many other countries. There will be a shop on hammer-king.com where you can get material from us, whatever you want. The, the king figure will, will be there, the action figure and, and everything. So um, I'm looking positively into the future and really hope that there's going to be a lot of music for us. And we look forward to hearing more and more. But thank you so much, everybody. Mm -hmm. We are here with Hammer King. Be sure to check out the self-titled album coming out via Napalm Records June 11th. This is Alex from Heavy New York, and we will see you next time. Thanks a lot. God bless the king. May the king bless you.